Oh, baby, what a start to free agency for the San Francisco 49ers. Really, across the whole league, it's been a crazy day. And this guy missed most of it because I was out having a good day with my son. What a great day to do it, but it's spring break here in Florida. Give me a break, would you? Either way, a lot has happened, and we're going to talk about it all next. Welcome back to Last Second Sports, where we are giving you our take down to the last second. And it's not Tuesday. It is Monday, but I still got my guy so real. Sue Neal. What's up, Sue Neal? You know, daylight saving time. They got you spring forward or fall back. I always get confused. So we just did the show today, so I wouldn't miss it tomorrow. So I uh, appreciate you doing that. Yeah, we did. We just did a whole day early because we didn't know what time it was. It's so strange that we. It's not Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. We thought when it like sprung forward that it was a whole day. We thought today was Tuesday, actually. Right. So here we are, right, right, right. thinking that the time didn't change. It was the whole day just got right. moved over. So what makes up, sense? My I see you. I see you, chat, and I will definitely highlight you here in a minute. But. We got to jump right into it. We got a jam-packed agenda. A lot has happened. Before we get into our own signings and re-signings, I do want to say goodbye to those that have either signed somewhere else or on their way to signing somewhere else. Mr. Jimmy G, I know you shed a tear. Sunil. Mike McGlinchey. Oh, sure. Ward just signed with the Texans, and then Aziz sounds like he's on his way out. Crazy, crazy day for ex-49ers, now ex-49ers, or soon to be ex-49ers. Just overall, what are your thoughts on the gentlemen who have moved on to other teams or seem to be trending that way? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be weird not having a Jimmy on the team for some time. Do we? I don't know if we have a Jimmy. Maybe that's a day two signing, right? Uh, there's definitely got to be a Jimmy. They'll draft a Jimmy somewhere. Yeah, they got to get a Jimmy on. Draft. Yeah. No, I mean, look, a lot, a lot can be said. Um about Jimmy Garoppolo. I'll start with him. Uh, I, I think you and I have been the same on him. Obviously, we know he was limited as a quarterback, but the way that he's handled a difficult situation and being here for the 49ers with the chaos that comes with Kyle Shanahan and his quarterbacks and them pretty much looking for his replacement year after year after year. And, uh, you know, the, the type of class that he handled it with never really becoming a distraction and, and still going out there and playing to the best of his ability and, you know, helping this team really change a culture around nothing but respect for him. I think the same could be said for guys like Jimmy Ward, who is one of the fan favorites, right? It's going to really, really tough to see him go, but that's unfortunately the business of, of, uh, of football, right? Uh, you, you would love to be able to resign everybody, but um, you know, I hope, the fact that he's going to the Texans uh, playing with D'Amico Ryans, I'm sure he'll move back to his natural position of safety. Hopefully they're breaking him off. Obviously McGlinchey got paid. I think that is awesome. I know he's taken a lot of shrapnel, I should, I should say, from uh, the 49er fan base. And, uh, you know, he went out there and, and showed that, you know, even though maybe some of the fan base doesn't think he's a great player, obviously there are teams that were willing to invest in him and, Aziz, what a great story, right? The fact that he went from an undrafted player to now more than likely, you know, being paid millions of dollars and probably be the starting middle linebacker for, we think, the Texans. What a great story, man. And it, it just uh, sad to see them go, but obviously uh, love the love the people that are replacing them. And, and uh, you know, the team's still going to be fire. Yeah, sorry, Judd but I got to take a last dig on the way out. <laughs> no, actually, I, I, I do. We've talked about it a lot. And, you know, I'm not the biggest Jimmy fan. I don't think there's any surprise there. But we both do agree that he certainly brought a level of professionalism. And, you know, it was it was a weird scent here. It, it was 
seemed like it drug on way too long. And we're talking about Jimmy G here. Drug on way too long. He was unhappy for the last few years. It seemed like Shanahan was unhappy for the last few years, but they just tried to make it work for the kids, I guess, is the way that that went down. But Jimmy Garoppolo going to the Raiders was what I had hoped was going to happen because that is such a Raider move. How do you move on from Derek Carr, who's mediocre, to just side Jimmy Garoppolo, who's unhealthy and mediocre? It just, wow, what a great move by the Raiders. Fantastic job, Raiders. Fantastic job. Not Jimmy Garoppolo's fault. Go get your money, young man. But, uh, yeah, the Raiders are, are going to Raider. Mike McGlinchey signing with the Broncos. It, it did sound like the Bears or the Broncos were the two teams that were interested in Mike McGlinchey. Again, another guy. Congratulations, Mike. Go get your money for sure. And we expected it. We expected Jimmy to be gone. We expected McGlinchey to be gone. I don't know if we necessarily expected it before free agency officially started. I, I feel like not only – I just feel like it moved fast. It right. moved very fast. I don't know if I expected it at all. And then Jimmy Ward signing with the Texans. Great signing. Great signing for him. Great signing for D'Amico Ryans. He gets a tone setter. He gets one of his guys in the locker room. And we'll see if Aziz follows suit because I think that would be a great fit for him as well. It makes the most sense. So I, I think no big surprises here, but we're talking about four guys who laid it all on the line for the San Francisco 49ers regardless of what we thought about their tenure. And so salute to each one of you. And now we got to get on to what the actual 49ers or still 49ers are doing. Let's start before we get into the signings from other teams. Let's talk about Gibson. He is back on a one-year deal. Interesting money layout. I don't necessarily mean it. I, I don't think it necessarily means he has to be the starter with the money he's getting paid. I think it's presumed he will be the starter. But I personally don't don't think that means that they have to be done at safety. They have to figure out a long-term answer. They have to add some depth, depth at the safety spot, and they can do that through the draft. They can figure it out by bringing in another free agent, but it is nice to have Gibson back on a one-year deal. What are your thoughts overall on Gibson returning? Yeah, I think this this actually tips kind of the, the hand of what the 49ers are going to be doing. Um, I disagree with you that they're going to bring in another – guy capable of starting on the team i think this shows Ooh, hold, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on this is how things get mixed up i'm saying they could the, the money okay. the money isn't necessarily big time starter money they easily could but i think it does make sense depth some sort of young piece one way or another gibson's what 33 yeah you know does he continue to play at a high level does he stay healthy they do need depth either way at the position and hopefully they can sign or draft the future as well. I just want to be clear about my thoughts here. Jesse and his feelings early already. All right, but uh, <laughs> well, listen, but <laughs> I don't need narratives on this on this show already. <laughs> you know, Jesse out here talking about there's going to be no big I'm moves, gonna, and all I'm of a sudden, plenty of bulletin board material. I promise you, but we don't have to do it on this topic. No, but I think that you know, and what I mean by a tip their hand. Right, there was a lot of talk that maybe the 49ers would make a splash signing at safety, right? A guy like Bates was somebody that could be on the radar for the 49ers. There was talk about, you know, re-signing a guy like Jimmy Ward. The fact that they went out and got the deal done with Gibson so early, to me, um, tipped their hat that this is a position where they're like, hey, let's do it one more year with what we had last year because they did do so well. Like what Gibson brought that Jimmy Ward didn't have, Tart didn't have, was the ability to to be a ball hawk, right? Him and Hufunga combined for what I think it was nine nine interceptions uh, over the course of the year. That's something that we hadn't had as far as production from the safety uh, safety you know department. Ha but like you said, he's not a long term solution there. So I could probably bet, like like uh, Brandon Ayuka said, I will bet my house that the 49ers um, go after a safety in this year's draft. Right? They need to obviously. Uh, bring somebody in that could be the long-term solution there. And I think they have, you know, some confidence as far as being able to identify a guy like Hufunga, who in year two turned into an all pro, um, you know, they, they, I'm sure they, they have some confidence there that they could find somebody in the draft that could uh, be there and, and doesn't need to have the pressure of being a starter from week one, right? They have a guy that could fill in there and produce as a starter in Gibson. So they could do their kind of, Hey, 
first year kind of red shirt and get a little bit of playing time here and there, much like they did with Funga year two Gibson probably, you know, isn't somebody that gets brought back because he might be retired at that point. Um, but now they have, you know, their young duo of Hufanga and whomever else they draft this, this off season or this draft um, and, you know, have their long-term solutions at safety. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Rini, they definitely can. They still have players that they can restructure and the way that they're setting up these deals, they, they have money to do so. So they, they're not done. And there are rumors that they're going after specific players. Sounds like Davenport just signed with the Vikings. The 49ers were in on him, supposedly. So it doesn't sound like they're done by any means. I don't know if the figures have come out yet. If they have, I didn't see them. I was prepping for the show also, so not really sure. Free agency is crazy. I agree. And then fish and chips. Is that a shot at people with uh, some gray hair sprinkled in? Because uh, I've got my fair share of gray hair in here. I mean, I sure just, do. you know, it's just saying fish and chips. You know, we do have hair conversations on this show. Um, <clears throat> I'll I'll be quiet about the rest of it. I don't want to make Sunil <laughs> mad. I need him for the rest of the show to help me out. Okay, so <laughs> we've given our thoughts on Gibson. <laughs> Sam Darnold. Okay, so... You know what's interesting about this? Sam Darnold's not a player that we talked about a lot, but I do know that we talked about him on one of our Tuesday get-togethers, and yeah, we mentioned him, Baker Mayfield, and someone else as like these young, young-ish quarterbacks that really didn't pan out. That m- you might just be able to talk into a one-year deal where they're the third-string quarterback, and then we kind of left it at that. We moved on. And we talked about every other quarterback other than those guys. Sam Darnold is all of a sudden with San Francisco. I think we presume that he's the number three quarterback. But I think that this kind of opens things up a little bit. I think multiple people are coming up with their interpretations on what it means for Purdy or Lance or or any of the above. Do you think it means anything other than he's the third string quarterback at all? So I, I actually brought this up when we were talking about quarterbacks and i brought this up with rohan when we we're talking about quarterbacks and the reason for it is the steve wilkes connection right this was uh when steve wilkes was over there coaching for carolina um last season at the end of the season sam darnold ended up taking over the starting posi- starting job and actually played fairly well i think they went four and two in that in that time period and you know he he played well enough now I think the narratives that are being created as far as this means that Trey, La- Trey Lance is on the uh, on the block or Purdy's on the block, I-, I disagree with that completely. I think this was a win-win for both both parties in this situation. And what I mean by that is, look, Sam Darnold was the third pick of the draft in 2018. He went to the Jets. And his time at the Jets didn't go well. You know, obviously the I'm seeing ghosts went out there and that kind of um, messed up his um, kind of his reputation. He, that, that kind of, you know, obviously gets you a certain type of reputation around the league. Then he gets traded to the Carolina Panthers and it didn't pan out there the way that they wanted it to pan out either. Right. Another coach gets fired, so on and so forth. This is a guy who two teams have given assets, traded assets for him, won a first round pick, and both of them had said, hey, you're not good enough to be our starter. So for now, all of a sudden, him to be good enough to start for a, a Super Bowl caliber team, those dots, those connections don't make sense. To me, I think this is a Mitch Trubisky move. And what I mean by that is Mitch Trubisky went to uh, the Buffalo Bills knowing that there was no chance for him to be a starter or anything like that. But what he did know is he was going to have a chance to learn under a good coaching staff, be a part of a winning uh, culture and a winning team. And I think that's what Sam Darnold wants. Think about the teams that he's played for, the Jets, which, which were a dumpster fire when he was there, and the Carolina Panthers, also a dumpster fire. If I'm Sam Darnold, I would like to go to – if I and I'm, I'm – choosing a team at this point i want to go to a situation that's stable i want to see what it's like to be around a winning culture whether or not i'm a part of that as far as playing on the field i don't think matters as much to sam darnold as what he could learn 
and just change his overall kind of perspective on the league. So to me, this was why Sam Darnold chose uh, the 49ers. Why the 49ers chose Sam Darnold is if there is any delay in Brock Purdy being able to be healthy, you have a guy who's only 25 years old, obviously has high-end talent coming out of USC, right? Known in California, mobile guy, right? So remember, one of the things I was looking for is you don't have to change the system too much when the backup comes in. He fits that because even though he doesn't have the athletic prowess of a Trey Lance, he still, you know, can move around the pocket, can use his feet to feet to get first downs and things of that nature. And Kyle Shanahan brings the best out of quarterbacks. So to me, I think it's a win-win situation. And he, at this point in Sam Donald's career, Jesse, uh, he can't he he can't demand anything, bro. You've been thrown away by two teams at this point. If and when Brock Purdy comes back and they need to bench him and put him in a baseball cap, I don't think he's going to create too many problems because I don't think he expects anything more than that. So to me, this was like a win-win situation of someone who could still be valuable to the 49ers, but also a situation where Sam Darnold could be very, or the 49ers could be very valuable to Sam Darnold. Yeah, I, I think, first of all, I think to get a talent like this to be your potential third string quarterback is phenomenal. Absolutely love it. And it's funny you said a, something about him being in a baseball cap because I think he's in a baseball cap on the thumbnail. I mean, peep it out for the show. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And Steve O says, or Stevie O says, or just Steve O, I don't know. Either way, says Trey will be traded. Watch and see. Okay. I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I think they showed that they easily can go through three quarterbacks at a season. And I'll ask you this, Sunil. If Sam Darnold was available last year and he was the backup to Purdy, when everything went down and he was the one that came in the game of the NFC Championship, would you have felt confident that the 49ers could win that game with Sam Darnold? Yes. Better than Josh Johnson, let's put it that way. I, I, I guess I should I should press with that because we were playing the Eagles, right? So um yeah, I, I think we would have I think he would have played much better than Josh Johnson. I don't know if that necessarily guarantees a victory. Okay. I mean, it definitely would have given him a shot, right? And yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. I don't want to, I don't think Purdy playing guarantees them victory. I think they would win, but I don't think anything was guaranteed. Right. If you don't win, you can't guarantee that if one thing would have broke differently, that you would have won. So, but I, I think they definitely would have had a chance with Sam Darnold. I would have felt pretty confident with Sam Darnold coming in. I mean, I felt kind of confident with Josh Johnson coming in. The way the defense was playing, figured, okay, they could run the ball. As long as he just doesn't make any boneheaded mistakes, they're good. And then he made a boneheaded mistake, and then he got injured, and everything was downhill. But right. ultimately, I I think this team was really, really good, and they had a shot to win. So, yes, if Sam Darnold was here, I do think that they could have won the NFC Championship. And quite frankly, if Sam Darnold has to play this year, I wouldn't be that worried about it. Sam Darnold, in short time stints, has played pretty damn well. Then, you know, people either figure out he's Sam Darnold or he remembers he's Sam Darnold. I don't know which one, but he can go out and win you a few games. So if it gets down to the third string quarterback, I think they'll be just fine. I think they'll be just fine. So not too and, and was worried it, about it. It wasn't his Jets time under Adam Gase. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So those years need to just be thrown out. There's throwaway years. Yeah. And then he gets what Matt rule. Like, I mean, come on, neither of those coaches are any NFL coaches anymore. So, you know, he's had a tough time too. Totally fair. And I think this is a great point. Fish and chips said Wilkes probably had a word with Lynch. Yeah. I'm sure that they asked Wilkes what, what type of guy is he? Is he it to Sunil's point? They probably feel like he's not the type of guy that'll ruffle feathers. If he's the third quarterback. And I think they wanted to know personality wise, his temperament. I think all those things matter when you're signing a high profile name, regardless of what he is in the league, he's a high profile name. So if you can sign that guy to be your third string quarterback, I think you have to understand who he is as a person. And Wilkes certainly knows the answer to that question. So I would say that they definitely did talk to Wilkes and I'm sure Wilkes had great things to say about Sam Darnold. And I think, I think the fact that they brought in Darnold, what, knowing that Wilkes is on this roster tells you that Sam Darnold is a pretty good kid. And so I'm yeah. looking forward to it. I mean, it's nice to have three legit quarterbacks the way that the 49ers go through them. So. And guys that are still young, you know, I, I tweeted it. 
Trey Lance is 22 years old. Brock Purdy is 23 years old. And for everything we're talking about, how long Sam Darnold has been in the league and all this kind of two different teams, he's 25 years old. So, um, you know, even let's say worst case scenario, Sam Darnold is on the field somehow because, you know, Trey Lance is injured. Brock Purdy isn't back yet, whatever the case may be. And he shows out. You still got a guy that if he turns into a guy, can still be a part of the 49ers future. So that's like worst case scenario, right? So we'll see. We shall see. <laughs> this is a great comment. It says after the Jimmy trade news, Jesse took his Niner hat off. <laughs> Jesse is undercover. The last draw. I'm out as a Niner fan. Undercover Jimmy, Ron, Jimmy Garoppolo fan. He, him and G Garoppolo's uh, bromance is really low key. He can't play for the cameras for sure, but he's he really shed a tear. For sure. He took every, the whole day off. Every Twitter of troll that you run into that doesn't have a profile picture that backs Jimmy G tough, they're all me. It's really every Jesse. single one of them are me. So there you go. Uh, what's up, Errol? He says, would you say that Darnold fits the Purdy playbook? And the writing is on the wall that Trey uh, is. Yeah, okay. So this is an interesting spin. I, I like this. I think a lot of people assume what one of the other commenters assumed which is oh trey lance is going to get traded now what about the other way does does this possibly mean that purdy or that they think purdy won't be ready for the regular season i don't know if it indicates anything like that first i, I think the whole this indicates trey is on the block is is foolish so that's just people that are hating right i don't think there's anybody anybody that's saying that that doesn't that really believes in trey lance right as far as what this indicates for Brock Purdy, I don't know if it indicates either way. I think if you're a smart team, if you're a, a, a championship caliber front office like the 49ers are, you have to have contingency plans for any scenario. So there, it, sir, sir, Purdy did go through surgery. Yeah, that surgery was a success, and the timeline is the timeline. Hey, he, he could be ready at six, the six-month mark which I think was end of August or something like that. But that's if everything goes well. And it, that doesn't necessarily mean everything is going to go well. There could be setbacks. His, his He could not respond the way that, that you know, other people have. Like, everybody's body is different. So you have to prepare and give yourself the best opportunity to win. So if you could get a guy – like, we have, you, got, you and Jack, I think, did it the best, Jesse. Talking about kind of if Purdy is coming back – from the surgery, like the news came out, it's going to limit the, um, the caliber of quarterback you could get because not all these backup quarterbacks are going to come to a situation where they could possibly be the third option, right? Yeah. So if you could get the caliber of Sam Darnold, who has been a starter in this league, who has won games in this league, and we know has talent um, and still okay with possibly being the third string you know, that's a win-win. You grab that guy as soon as <laughs> as soon as he says yes, right? And so I think it doesn't – I think it, you can't read too deep into anything other than the 49ers front office is doing what a good front office is and giving their team the best chance to win by uh, manning them with enough talent in case a Brock Purdy doesn't come back healthy. Yeah, I think this, this signing does two things for me. I think, one, it insulates the 49ers and protects them. Against anything. I mean, this could be an injury to Trey. This could be a setback to Purdy. This could be Purdy does not does come back, but it, he's not fully good to go. His arm strength is lost. Trey isn't as good as what they thought. And also, it gives them flexibility. You get to the trade deadline, all three are healthy, and one is playing really good, and you have confidence in the other. Well, it, Sam Darnold could be a bargaining chip for somebody. Maybe somebody needs a quarterback. Maybe somebody's quarterback desperate. And so I think that it gives the 49ers flexibility. It insulates them. It protects them. Overall, I have zero issue with the signing. And again, the fish and chips with a great comment when he said that the 49ers probably talked about Wilkes. Yes, they absolutely talked to Wilkes. And the fact that they brought him in still tells you that you're getting a high character kid which is great. I mean, that's ultimately what the 49ers like. You want a kid that can play. You want a kid that's high character. This is somebody that they did look at prior to him coming out of college, so it's not like they have zero familiarity with him. I, I like it. I like the signing overall. What is up, Marco? How you doing, my man? Marco, by the way, called the Hargrave signing 
I got a text from him on 221 saying Javon Hargrave is the 49ers number one target. Bingo. Marco hits again. This guy does not freaking miss. That was phenomenal. That being said, a lot of people think that we overpaid for Hargrave, who is a 30 year old defensive tackle. They're adding another defensive tackle to an already high priced one in Eric Armstead. And they haven't done anything with the offensive line. I think there's some mixed feelings here. Uh, Everybody understands that Hargrave is a really good player, but they think he might be overpaid. What are your thoughts on this? There, okay, so did you want to break down the contract first, and then we could go from there, or do you? Yeah, want to just yeah. Back? I mean, I think the contract is pretty damn good. So here, here's the breakdown. In 2023, he'll count for 6.6 million against the cap. Uh, 2024, he will count for 15.5 million against the cap. And then after 2024, they actually have an out where they can designate him as a post June one cut and only take a 5.8 million cap hit, which is minimal for where the cap is going to be at that point. If they decide to retain him, his cap hit would be 26.55 million. And then they've got the same scenario the very next year where they can take a minimal cap hit post June 1st cut and they would pay him $29.3 million if they decided to retain him. I personally don't see him getting two year three with the 49ers the way this contract is laid out. So you're getting Hargrave, who played at a phenomenal level this last year, and you're getting him at 30 and 31. Not bad at all. For a total of 21, you take the cap hit, another six. So a total of $27 million for two years of Javon Hargrave, I think is a pretty damn good signing everybody again looks at that big inflated number not necessarily the case so now that i've laid that out i think we both agree he's not overpaid so let me change the question sure what does this tell you about the way the 49ers are building their roster still going forward and what does this mean for another javon that is on this roster and javon kinlaw who we just saw working out a couple days ago looking pretty explosive what does this mean for him as well? So there's a lot of things to read into this this move, Jesse, and I think a lot of it is positive for the 49ers. So the first part of your question, what does this say about what the 49ers are how the 49ers are building this team? One of the things that I think has been a criticism of the 49ers and Shanahan and just the front office overall is that they double down on their mistakes. They are stubborn. They feel like, hey, they can't do any wrong. And this is a move that shows that that might not be true, or if it was true, it's not the case anymore. Obviously, Javon Kinlaw was a first-round draft pick. Uh, You know, you traded away DeForest Buckner to pick Javon Kinlaw. And unfortunately, the Javon Kinlaw, um, you know, uh, situation with the 49ers hasn't panned out. Well, he hasn't been able to stay healthy, has had some run-ins here and there, obviously the famous one with Grant. Um, But they were able to be like, hey, we made a mistake. He's not the guy that we need him to be. So let us go all in on a guy like um, Hargrave, who is exactly what the 49ers need. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. I think he, outside, if you take Arik Armstead off, you you list every single – a uh, person that's played interior defensive line last season and the amount of pressures they were able to create. Javon Kinla, I mean, I mean, Javon Hargrave by himself is like, has more. So his production is far better than anything that we've had at that position. Obviously that's been a big weakness for us. Um, so I think he's definitely going to help in, in getting to the quarterback. He's also going to help in, in the run, even though that's not his strength. I think him and Armstead, together can really change the dynamic of, of, of stopping the run as well. But now who do you double? Hargrave is somebody that most teams have to double. Obviously Bosa, uh, they're going to extend him. And he's somebody that most teams double and you can't double everybody, right? It really hampers what you can do um, as an offense. If you're, you're trying to 
double team two people, right? There's going to be people that get open. So I expect this move to make Ark Armstead look better. Um, obviously, um, Bosa is going to look better. I think Hargrave is going to look better because he's playing alongside Bosa. And we've seen what Hargrave could do when he plays around a lot of talent because, look, the Eagles defensive line he came from had a lot of talent as well. And all of those guys ate. I think they had, what, three guys, four guys that had double-digit sacks. That's what we could look for from this defensive line is not just one guy in Bosa that's getting a lot of sacks and then everybody else kind of in that six to eight range. I think we could eat, we could definitely see um, Jesse because I don't think they're done yet with the defensive line or even if it's Drake Jackson, let's say he's the fourth man on the on that on that line. We could see two or three guys with double digit sacks this year, which is something that the 49ers haven't had in quite some time. So pretty exciting that they brought in a guy like this. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the numbers up front seem massive, but when you really break down the contract, it is a steal of a contract. And it again, you're right. It does sound like they are not done with the defensive line. <laughs> they were in on multiple players that have signed elsewhere already. So the 49ers did a phenomenal job with this signing. And I want to give a shout out to Matt. He did send me the contract for Jimmy Ward. Oh man, this is very very minimal so a little heartbreaking that he's gone i get it you can't re-sign everybody but it's a two-year 13 million dollar deal it can max out at 14 and a half million with playing time bonuses this is wow uh that's not a lot of money not a lot of money at all sucks that ward's gone but they do have some young players that are up and coming and anytime you get a player in the secondary that is across that age of 30 you're kind of taking a risk when you sign them and you know, maybe they felt like the 7 million or so was a little bit too much, a little bit. Well, too much. depends on what they're going to do with that 7 mil, right? We've been hearing there's some, still some name that some moves out there that they're going to bring in. I think if those guys end up panning out, Jesse, you know, it might be worth letting a guy like Jimmy Ward walk, no matter how much I love Jimmy Ward. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do. I, I love Jimmy Ward. So, you know, I'm happy for him. Ultimately, I'm happy for him. I'm going to miss him. And I think the 49ers are going to miss his mentality as well. His mentality is is second to none. I think all teams need players like that. So, you know, I will miss that for sure. But, but I will say that, uh, I will say that the 49ers getting Javon Hargrave was also an absolute steal. Again, it does sound like they're not done. They were in on Davenport before he went to the Vikings. So we'll see what they do. There are more moves on the horizon. Absolutely. Can I bring up one one more thing? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. uh, why this is a big deal for the 49ers as well. Like, So you know I'm a Shanahan stand. So I'm going to get any chance that I can to, to, to big up Kyle Shanahan. And I don't know if you've – I know you were kind of off doing things with your son today, but the, the report came out that – the 49ers weren't the highest bid, highest contract for Hargrave. Actually, I think the Cleveland Browns offered more money no. uh, to, to Hargrave, and he chose the 49ers over Cleveland. He wanted to be with the 49ers. Now, one that's funny because obviously I've been talking a lot about how this new rivalry is going to be the Eagles and the 49ers, so this adds another uh, you know match to that flame, right, or whatever, an extra log. But, but – the 49ers are a destination now where premium talent are choosing the 49ers over other situations. Now, to me, that's a big deal, right? So for everything you guys, people want to um, talk about uh, Kyle Shanahan and, you know, the front office and the 49ers and all this kind of stuff, they've made it a point, Jesse, to treat players a certain way and especially players on their way out giving them kind of the benefit of the doubt, you know, letting them finish out or, or giving them the options on being able to do things that I think go a long way when it comes to how players look at the organization, right? Maybe some things that aren't quote unquote smartest for the team, but if you're playing the long term, as far as being an attractive destination, a place where people want to play and people trust the organization, all that kind of stuff. I think the 49ers have done an amazing job being able to do that. And th this is a move that proves that because he chose the 49ers, even though they couldn't offer as much money 
because of the culture, because of the roster, because of um, that this team is is competitive and the culture around it and, and, and the coaching staff and everything that players look for in, in a team they play for, he chose this team over teams that maybe were offering more money. So to me, that's a huge, huge uh, thing moving forward because that's something you can always have, right? That's something that could be the difference between getting the – the, the talent that you want versus not getting the talent. And I think, you know, now we're finally seeing it pay off. And a guy like Hargrave, who a lot of teams wanted, he was the number one D tackle left, right? When Deron Payne got franchised or whatever, he, this was the guy. And there's a lot of teams that needed a defensive tackle just as bad as the 49ers did. We weren't the highest contract, but we still got the player because of all of the intangibles that the 49ers have developed under Kyle Shanahan. So feather in his cap. Also, who the F wants to play in Cleveland? <laughs> dumpster <laughs> fire, that would be. <laughs> well, I think it's other teams. Sorry too, if you live but... in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> no offense, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't ever live in Cleveland. <laughs> Jimmy G, I don't know. Does this happen in other chats? Because I feel like we're special over here. And I remember when this show first started going years ago, we used to have so many different players' names coming in and out of the chat. It was a lot of fun. It, something happened to that. I don't know why it went away, but I do love when we get somebody who changes their name to a player and then likes to tell us <laughs> that they're not leaving. What's up, Loth of the Truth? All right. Okay. <laughs> Let me just preface this by saying <laughs> that I sent out a tweet today saying I did not expect that the 49ers we're going to do anything big over the first 48 hours because that hasn't been their MO since forever. They always just kind of lay low. They definitely go get players. Not shocked that they were aggressive necessarily, but I am shocked that it happened so quickly. I should have prefaced that tweet by saying, unless it was Hargrave, because <laughs> I knew that the 49ers were big time in on Hargrave, thanks to my guy Marco, but I didn't do that. And got killed for it on Twitter. I thought it was pretty funny stuff because because you're a loser, no more than bro. what thirty minutes later they signed Javon Hargrave. So I do want to say this: definitely surprised that things happen so quickly for the 49ers. Not surprised personally by the aggressiveness because they do have the cap space to go make moves. Hargrave was a guy that's been on their radar. Deron Payne, we know, was also on their radar because at the trade deadline they were efforting on trying to get him most likely would have re-signed him as well to a big-time contract had they been able to get him. Are you surprised by the 49ers' aggressiveness? And and we, we can throw it both ways. Are you surprised at how quickly they got into the game? And are you surprised at the big-time players that they went after immediately? No, I mean, this I think points to, you know, you asked a question earlier, what does this signing mean for the 49ers? Look, and from, you know, some of the the, the rumblings we're hearing um, from guys, you know, that are talking about the 49ers are still not done. This team has, has been okay with filling in a lot of their roster with young players. And it seems like... Seahawks signed Draymond Jones? Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's a big signing if that's the case. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail you, but that's, yeah. that's huge. That's huge. No, nope, no problem. You can never derail me, bro. But um, <laughs> the uh, to me, it looks like the 49ers are looking at an opportunity right now to go quote unquote all in and, and really attack that Super Bowl, right? I think they looked at how close they've been getting and they're like, okay, we could keep playing these young players that may or may not pan out the way that we want, or we could start filling these holes that we have as far as starting capable roles and get some um, veteran talent that could come in and perform right away. And if, if the reports are true and there's a lot of people thinking that they're going to go after a center, they're going after an edge rusher as well. And if they end up filling some of these uh, roles with that as well, you know, it looks like this team is, is looking to make a run this year. Right. And, it makes sense, right? The NFC is, is down, right? The Eagles, I think, have been the cream of the crop along with the 49ers, and we saw how decimated the Eagles have gotten, right? It seems like their whole defense signed with other other teams. Um, so I like it. I think that, you know, it's, 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 a, it's kind of like the evolution. You kind of see where everybody's at, where your team is at, 
and then you pounce when the opportunity is there. And I think that the 49ers are looking to make a run this year. And uh, that's that's what I think a move like Hargraves is. It's not it's not a hey, three years down the line. It's like we got two years to win this thing and and let's go, let's go all in and do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the mentality. I agree. I think they need to be in an all-in mentality. And they've done so by remaining flexible. Now I am curious to see what this Draymond Jones contract amounts to. It'll probably be a little bit before we hear the details if he has, in fact, been signed by the Seattle Seahawks. So uh, I I think that I'm still going to end up liking the Hargrave signing more because of the way the contract is laid out. But if it is similar, man, Draymond Jones would have been a nice get for sure. Ah, man, that's that's good. That's good for Seattle. And... We've been talking about Seattle. They are there. They have money to spend. They have two first-round picks. They're not far off of the 49ers, not as far off as we would like to think that they are, especially with the quarterback position being in flux here in San Francisco. I do expect that the 49ers win the division right now, early on, favorites in the NFC, no doubt about it. But we still don't know what's going on at quarterback, and that's you know a, a big, big deal. So... Fish and Chips says that it's a three-year deal worth 51. But what are the actual details? You know, because we see the cap hit. We saw like 80-something million dollars for Hargrave. And then it's like, well, $6.6 million cap hit, $13 million cap hit, and then avoidable year. So we'll see. We'll see what the details are. You know, on the surface, that even on the surface, that doesn't sound like a crazy big contract, to be real with you. This Draymond Jones is a really, really good player. He's I think he's only 25 or 26. So he's young. I love that signing for for Seattle. We went and got our own guy for sure, and I'm happy about that. But, man, Draymond Jones is hes a good player. He's a very, very good player. Okay, so now the question remains, what the hell's next? What do the 49ers do? So the 49ers, there's been rumors that they're in on a center, but most of the high-value centers have already re-signed other than Bradbury. Do you think the 49ers have a chance to get Bradbury? Do they need to get Bradbury? And if not, if they just start bringing back, let's say they they bring back Brindle, maybe they sign, I don't know, a rotational guy who could possibly start somewhere. Like, is that enough on the offensive line? Are you starting to get a little bit worried with the offensive line at this point? They lost McGlinchey. They haven't upgraded yet at center. There's really only one upgrade left for sure, like big time upgrade left at center. Are you starting to get a little concerned? If not, why? (laughs) What's going on with the offensive line? Well, obviously right now there's question marks, right? Now, whether there's concern or not, I guess, goes to whether or not you, like how much faith you have in the 49ers staff of developing identifying the right players and things of that nature, right? Last off season, they let Lake and Tomlinson walk. People were like, I'm concerned about what's going to happen at left guard. Um, we saw Aaron Banks get pushed around. He's going to be a bust, all these kind of things, right? There was this part of the fan base that was saying that there was concern. Well, obviously the 49ers knew something that we didn't know. Um, and Aaron Banks looks like, that was the right decision, right? Much cheaper option. The, the level of play was um, around the same, if not, you know, better. Um, and you got a younger guy that can, you know, you could build around type of thing. So <clears throat> definitely center and right tackle are areas of, of need, right? You would hope Burford takes another step forward. Obviously he played, um, you know, the right guard position as a rookie. He had an up and down season. Hopefully year two will be, you know, much better. And then at center, we know that the 49ers have been grooming a guy like uh, Zakil. So do we think he's that guy? That would be us trusting the 49ers. Obviously Colt McKivitz was signed. Do we think he's the guy? That would be us trusting the 49ers. So I wouldn't say I'm worried though. I'm worried, but I will say that I'm still waiting to see what the 49ers do through the rest of this free agency and the draft. 
before you know I make my assessment, right? I don't think the off season is done, um, but I, I have full faith that the 49ers are going to figure it out. I was one of the guys last season, last off season, Jesse, when everybody was like, oh, this is the most terrible offensive line ever. I'm like, yo, relax. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And look, they were fine. Were they the best offensive line? No. Were they the worst offensive line? No. They were closer to one of the better offensive lines than one of the worst offensive lines. So to me, I think that Kyle Shanahan and Lynch do a good enough job of making sure that they're going to have a solid offensive line there. But I do think, hey, if they could go get Bradbury, I think they should go do that. <clears throat> um, I think that, you know, having a guy like him who I think is a great player, I think that would be an upgrade over what they had in Brendel. And once again, buys them some time to develop Zakiel if he's not ready. But once again, I don't know how I don't know anything about Zakiel as far as what his readiness level is. I just know that if the 49ers say he's ready and play him, you know, that's our guy. I'll, I'll fully, fully be behind that. Uh, Miliano West, I think, is on in the XFL. Yeah, sure. he's in the XFL. Yeah, he's in the XFL. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how, how it goes. Yeah, Lawan's a free agent. He said he's not playing right tackle. So we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> that's not going to happen. I here, Here's the thing. And I don't remember, like, every little thing that I said about the offensive line going into the offseason. Actually, I, I kind of do remember now. <laughs> so... I said for sure that they last off season, they were going to lose Lake and Tomlinson. Absolutely. Banks was going to be the starter. We'll see how it turns out. I never, I never crapped on banks. I just said, Hey, it's going to be tough for him to be an upgrade over Tomlinson because Tomlinson was a pro bowler. So I don't know if he was necessarily an upgrade, but he definitely played up to, or pretty damn close to that level. So that was great. And I said, I don't know what the offensive line is going to be. I don't think any of us actually know, but it would be a shame if the offensive line is the reason that they end up not winning a Super Bowl, I think some people might put it on that. Some people put it on Shanahan, Purdy. I don't know. Whatever your thoughts are, I don't think that the offensive line was a reason that this team didn't win a Super Bowl. So thank God that didn't happen. However, they need to get better at offensive line. They need to get better or at least remain as good. And I don't know how confident I am Last year in losing Tomlinson and knowing Banks was there, I wasn't sure how that was going to play out, but I felt decent that Banks had been in the system for a year <clears throat> and was going to be the guy. Center, I think, is a whole different ball game, and really at right tackle, I, I don't know what the plan is at right tackle. So we'll see if they go out and get a center. It's not like Bradbury's not out there still, or there aren't, you know, at least maybe some other options, but I felt like you're not going to be able to upgrade at right tackle through free agency. You're not going to be able to do it during the draft, at least not in year one. You have to do it at the center position. And so far they have not done that. Doesn't mean that they aren't trying or haven't tried, but that's where we're at at this very moment, still very early on, but Bradbury is going to be gone soon. So I am curious to see. However, I did say a few weeks ago, do not be surprised if the right whole middle to right is completely reworked by guys that you're disappointed in. Like, let's say Zakel Poe and um, who was our, our right guard this year? Why am I drawing a blank? Burford. Burford. Let's say that's the new new right side. <laughs> Don't be surprised. This is what the 49ers do, and people are going to be pissed, and then we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. But if it's the guys on the roster, I do feel pretty confident in saying I'm not going to say that they're going to be terrible because I don't know. I don't know how good these guys are. I would be pretty confident in saying that you're probably going to take at least a slight back step on the right side of the line. I think that's safe to say at this point. So that would yeah, be and I just disagree with that. I disagree with that. I okay, think why? and judge judge Shud judge Shuddy is, is here backing me up because it was a lot more uh, doom and gloom last off season Wait, for, from me though. Real so I, this is what I, I know Grant was a lot more, but yeah. the thing was, there was this, this, there's this narrative. You're going to try to be a championship caliber team when you have uh, three of the five offensive linemen that have had, and then insert amount of starts kind of thing. Right. And I think that there was this narrative that Kyle Shanahan didn't know what he was doing. John Lynch didn't know what he was doing because you're starting this offensive line with, a handful of starts because I think only Brenda 
Brendel had been a starter in the NFL at that time, right? Only, and then it was McGlinchey and and uh, uh, Trent. But they ended up doing okay. And like I said, to me, I don't know. It does like for me outside looking in, it doesn't look like the solution is there. I think I disagree with you that they can't necessarily find a starter in the draft because I do think there's some guys that they could find in the second round if they do package their picks up and move into the second round that possibly could be a day one starter that they could get for right tackle. But I I have faith that Shanahan, Lynch, Peters, and this whole you know uh, front office and and uh, coaching staff will make sure that this offensive line is good enough to be championship caliber because at the end of the day, what this offense needs as far as the run first and, you know, the passing game and all that kind of stuff, they know how important this offensive line is as well. So to me, I believe that it will be get done. I, I do think, though, that there's other players that are going to be brought in, whether it be through the draft and or free agency, that – are going to be part of this offensive line moving forward. I, I also want to say this because there are things that I know for a fact that I did say. Again, I knew from day one Lakin was gone. I did say I don't think Banks can be as good as a Pro Bowl left guard, but I didn't say I know that he's going to be bad. Center, I knew that Brendel was new in the position. Um, they talked about, or Shanahan talked about how that's the heartbeat of his offense and he was going to yet a new center. And then McGlinchey was coming off an injury. And so I, do, I can say for sure, I knew I had skepticism, but I don't think I was ever very definitive. And so I think this happens all the time. And Judd, I mean, go find the clip. If I said it, then I said it. But I think a lot of people really conflate my opinions with grants because i'm grants guy or we do shows together this happens all the time and then i gotta go find a freaking clip and be like actually that's not at all what i said um good try so if i said it go find it i i don't think that i ever was a guy that was like no blah blah, blah. i do remember saying repeatedly and i said this to you many times Sunil, i don't know what the outcome of the offensive line is but it would be a shame if they had money available and instead of using that money, they re-sign Jimmy G if the offensive line ends up being the reason that they do not win a Super Bowl. I said that. I know I said that a million times. It's ingrained in my head. That is not me saying that it is going to be a problem. It's just saying, hey, you had money available. Instead, you chose to sign Jimmy G. If it is the reason that you don't win a Super Bowl, that would be a shame. I did say that over and over and over and over. For a fact. So the other stuff, I, I don't know. I don't think that I was ever like, oh, it's for sure not going to be good and we're screwed. I, I don't ever remember that take. Coming Jesse, out we mind. don't do nuance over here on Last Second Sports. That's it's true. extremes. True. So if you're skeptical, you you think they're trash. And That's if true. you're like me, they're the GOAT. So I was on the GOAT side. You were on the trash side. That's right. Judd settled it for us. I won. Totally fair. <laughs> uh, um, Jay Dizzy says, why can't you find a starting rookie in the third round? Abram Lucas was a six round rookie Seattle. Okay. Okay. I'm not saying they can't find an eventual starter, but the 49ers aren't really known to play a lot of rookies year one. I mean, I don't know if you've watched Shanahan and what he decides to do. And maybe I'm, I minced up my words. They might be able to find a starter, I guess, but to say that that starter in round three let's say it's a right tackle is going to be better than McGlinchey. I know a lot of people don't like McGlinchey, but McGlinchey just got paid and he got paid for a reason to say that year one, he's going to be better than McGlinchey or he's even going to start on a Shanahan led team who does not like to start young players. I don't know. I think that's optimistic. I'll just leave it at that. I think it's very, very optimistic. So do you think that the 49ers stand pat at, at 99? <clears throat> I don't know. Do you think 99 is where their first pick is? Like if you, if you, let's say gun to your head, you had to, you had to uh, put money on it. Would you bet that 99 is their first pick or they move up somehow? I mean, I would have bet that they would have moved up last year. I mean, they, 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 they didn't they stand put on every single draft pick. They just stayed right. Yep. That, it, they had a ton of draft picks and they stayed in the, in that place. So, so this year, I mean, this year, I think it's even more likely because there's a good sense of how many compensatory picks that they're going to be getting 
this year and, and more importantly next year, right? We saw, you know, that Jimmy is probably going to be a compensatory pick. Uh, some uh, McGlinchey is probably going to be a compensatory pick. Obviously, they have compensatory picks coming from D'Amico, Rand Carthen. So there's just so many picks that they have over the next couple of years. I think it would be, I think it would be very, very surprising if they end up picking at 99, being their first pick. Yeah, I mean, it would be. It definitely would be. I think it would have been surprising last year though too. So, um, listen, I don't, I don't want to do the like you die if you're wrong scenario can i mean it's a little aggressive we don't do nuance over here i just said that like five minutes ago like do i do like you think i just say these things we don't do nuance it's extreme <laughs> you either stick with it and die or you win right. and you're going it. okay Jeez. okay 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 uh oh god is that their first pick is that their first pick uh I'm gonna say yes. That's their first pick. I'm, but they will make a trade somewhere else. They'll move up at some point and do something. But yes, that's gonna be their first pick. Oh man, oh. now I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, Judd, li- Judd. By the way, like <laughs> I know, I know that like you only have limited characters, and I know you're not hating. You're always in the chat, and even if you were, whatever. I don't really care. You're still in the chat, so I appreciate you being here. I got mad haters that are seriously in here all the time just hating my guts that's fine i don't care um but yeah i mean you said hey jesse maybe you didn't hate hard it's hard to explain with no context not enough characters but you did say they neglected the line but i agreed so i'm not hating yeah i mean they neglected the line through free agency 100 percent, and i felt like they left themselves in a spot where like everything had to go well and fortunately for them it did it definitely did go well for them so kudos to them but I think making that same bet two years in a row would be a little bit rough. Um, I, I don't, I, again, I feel confident in saying that if they don't bring in a free agent center and they either bring back Brendel or they rely on Zakel or whatever, that chances are they're going to take a back step at the line. I'm not saying that it's going to be a huge back step or it's going to cost them a ton or whatever, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, this is what the 49ers do. I just, for me, the way that I build the team is not how the 49ers have done it. And the 49ers have gotten very far. So kudos to them. They're obviously very, very smart. And they do this for a living. I don't. But I just think that you build a team through the quarterback, then the offensive line, then the defensive line. The 49ers seem to have gone defensive line, every weapon around, and then quarterback and offensive line. So I just a little bit different philosophy. It has worked to get them far, but they have not gotten over the hump. And so until they get over the hump, I can criticize them. So we'll see. Hopefully they get over the hump for sure. He's trashing them guys. Remember no nuance, no nuances, no nuances here. What? No nuance. Well, that's what we should call our show on Tuesdays. No nuance Tuesdays. <laughs> there we go. No, no nuance. nuance Niner talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, y'all. Hey, listen, this was a hell of a day. I'm sure there will be more to come again tomorrow. I appreciate y'all for hopping in. I think I'm going to do the call-in show tomorrow. Larry Kruger just texted me, and I think he wants to do a show Wednesday. What should I tell him, chat? I'm If I tell him no, it's I'm blaming you guys. You guys are, are the answer. I'm going to read you the text, and then I want you to be the ones to respond, okay? He said, Jesse, did we confirm a day or a time for you and I to stream this week? What should I tell him? We talked about Wednesday. Just just so we're clear, we talked about Wednesday, Larry and I did. We didn't have a time set, but should I tell him yay or nay? Just know it's your fault, whatever we say. So never say no to Larry. Do it Wednesday. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. We're good for Wednesday, Larry. I'll text him. And try to kill this narrative that he's creating that uh, Trey Lance is going to be traded, by the way. Oh, he thinks he's going to be traded? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's what some Twitter people were coming at me saying that, Kruger thinks that Trey Lance is on the on the block to be traded. So you're you're one of the guys that's all Trey Lance. So you know that'd be a good debate. We we well, I've been on a show a few times. I've been on a show a few times, and we definitely have a difference of opinion. I like Larry. Larry's a, in fact, we just talked for an hour and a half the other day, just shooting the shit. So Larry's a really really cool guy. Um, but we definitely have a difference of opinion, and I think that makes the show fun for sure. It's always been on his turf, though. So, you know, I got to bring him over here eventually to see what's going on. 
And like Judd said, no nuance. Let him know. No, no, nu- nuance. no nuances over on Last Second Sports. Extreme. I get it. I get it. Extreme only. <laughs> Extreme takes only. Yeah, 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 exactly. All right, y'all. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a blessed night. Peace.